1995's Toy Story is arguably Pixar's most beloved film for both kids and adults, kicking off a sprawling franchise that's endured the test of time. Rewatching Toy Story as a grown up reveals the film as a dense, sometimes dark movie with more layers than one could have ever imagined as a little kid. Animators filled Toy Story with subtle gags, Easter eggs, and cultural references that very few children would understand. For example, the character of Mr. Potato Head is voiced by the late great insult comedian Don Rickles, who was at the height of his career in stand-up in the 60s and 70s. At one point, Mr. Potato Head makes a crack at one of Andy's other toys. You uncultured swine! What are you looking at, you hockey puck? Referring to someone as a hockey puck, which definitely sounds like something you can't say on TV, was Rickles' signature line. On the other end of the spectrum is the super creepy carpet in Sid's house. How can a carpet be creepy? Because it's the same pattern as the carpet of the nightmarish Overlook Hotel in the 1980 horror classic The Shining, where we see Danny playing with his toys. Come and play with Woody and Buzz. Forever. Something very intimate is definitely going on between Woody and Bo Peep. And while kids might take their conversations at face value, adults in the know recognize it as pretty suggestive. What do you say I get someone else to watch the sheep tonight? <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> I... What exactly they're going to do is up for debate, given traditional toy anatomy, but there's no doubt about what's going on here. Bo Peep is pre-arranging a booty call. Another risque joke requires a bit more unpacking. One of Sid's freaky Franken toys is named Legs, and she consists of what appears to be the long, shapely legs of a Barbie doll connected with a hook on a line. In other words, Legs is a hooker. Woody is a kind cowboy in the vein of classic good guy cowpokes like Roy Rogers and Gene Autry. One thing that sets him apart is that although he's the hero of the movie, Woody makes a lot of attempts to get rid of his new rival, permanently. Woody moves to get rid of perceived interloper Buzz Lightyear, intending to knock him behind a piece of furniture so he'll get lost. He instead knocks him out of an open window, where there is little chance he'll ever be found. Even worse, he grabs the remote of RC, the remote-controlled car, and forces that toy to be the one to nudge Buzz, thereby making RC an unwilling accomplice. Usually in Disney movies, it's the bad guy who tries to kill the good guy. In Toy Story, the good guy tries to kill the other good guy. Toy Story is a movie for kids, but some of its themes are much more familiar to adults, particularly those who struggle with mental illness. At its core, it's a movie about anxiety, delusions, and the disappointment of believing you're not living up to your potential. For the first half of the film, Buzz Lightyear believes that he's not just a toy, but that he really is an actual space ranger. You are a toy! He is so firmly under that delusion that he cannot see his reality for what it is. He hangs around self-aware toys and lives in a child's room and even freezes when real humans come around, but still does not waver in his stance. The only thing that makes Buzz realize what he truly is comes when he sees a TV commercial for Buzz Lightyear toys, and in it sees rows and rows of himself on a toy store shelf. Buzz immediately and understandably becomes quite depressed. Also dealing with an identity crisis is Woody, the film's other main character. His main motivation for getting rid of Buzz is to remain the dominant toy in Andy's heart and toy box. An old-fashioned toy, he is extremely threatened by the shiny, high-tech Buzz Lightyear toy swooping in and stealing his place as Andy's favorite. He's like a cowboy doll version of Willie Loman from Death of a Salesman, desperately trying to hold on to relevance and usefulness in a changing world that finds him increasingly obsolete. The toys of Toy Story are living things, of course, because they clearly walk, talk, think, and feel. But that isn't the same as being an actual biological organism. The main difference between the toys and animals, for example, is that they cannot die in a normal fashion. They are simply played with or not played with. If they are played with, great. If not, they sit on a shelf or in a toy box or some other storage option indefinitely, aware of the passage of time as they wait and wait and wait to be played with, a moment which may never come. We definitely know that toys can die, though, since Sid blows up a comic that Carl action figure, and Buzz nearly meets his end in a similar way, as Sid ties a small rocket to his back. Even worse, Sid's homemade chimeras are also alive, Frankenstein together from other dismembered toys. So, toys can die, but the only means by which to kill them is with brutal, painful torture, and even that might not end their suffering. Now that's dark. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.